Selina and Aman are two Year 11 pupils studying for their GCSEs at Park View School in Birmingham. For winning first prize in a school science competition, they travelled to the Kennedy Space Centre in Florida to give their imaginations a boost. The trip was really inspiring. Then we had the chance to experience some of the astronaut trainings that they went through. So it was like really, really good. So we get to feel what you know, the astronaut felt like. The competition challenged pupils to design an ecosphere for off-world living. I chose Mars and we had to like think about how humans can live on Mars. So we had to like how to colonize Mars and how to put resources in there and make it like habitable for humans to live on. It's been a giant leap of imagination for both the girls and the school. It's like the because first time the school has done it, so it's like yeah. a new thing to us. But yeah. that's why you know everybody got excited. A really big achievement for the school and for us as well. Yeah. Offering pupils this kind of challenge in order to encourage scientific achievement is a far cry from the more basic concerns facing the school several years ago. In 2002, the A star to C pass rate at GCSE had slumped to 23% and the school was in special measures. Yet by 2007, the A star to C pass rate had more than doubled and science A star to C passes were at 53%. Head teacher Lindsay Clark has overseen the school's transformation into one of the most improved schools in the country. It hasn't been an easy process. I was the fifth head teacher in, in three years, I think it was. Uh, the school had a reputation of being a weak school. We were bottom of the league table, certainly in Birmingham. Improving science GCSE results has been a complex process involving a reassessment of underlying whole school issues. These include pupil behaviour and attitude, quality of teaching and learning, the range of courses on offer, and developing parental support. What we did was to try to change the ethos of the school. The motto at the time was part view that the school at the heart of the community. We changed that to something very simple, respect, opportunity and achievement. You're all equal in the sight of Allah. The school serves a culturally distinct community. The pupils are almost all Asian Muslim. 65% of pupils are entitled to free school meals. I have eaten from the same plate and drank from the same cup as those people whose colour is totally different than mine. In a community with a limited educational background, few peoples had serious academic ambitions. When I first came and you talked to many of the students, particularly the lads, their aspirations were, I'm going to be a taxi driver, I'm going to college, and then no thought after that. The majority of students will now have an aspiration. We have loads and loads who aspire to science qualifications. No longer the taxi driver, but I want to be the pharmacist, I want to be the doctor. One of the reasons for this change in ambition is the improved standard of teaching in the school. In science, busy and varied lessons hold people's attention and leave no time for messing around. Newly qualified teacher Maza Hussain is introducing the concept of ecological competition to his Year 10 core science group. Now these five different cards, they're in different positions along the room, okay? So they're in different places. I want each table to go around the class and you need to collect each of those cards. They're an active bunch of kids, they're very active. Uh, there are some kids which have got behaviour issues. So, I mean, I have to make my lessons a bit more engaging, a bit more interactive to engage these kids. So there's constant movement, there's from one activity to another activity. Quickly, back to your desk, back to your desk. Let's see who might get all those cards from different coloured ones. This group has only got three cards. This group, you've got all five, have you? Yeah, OK, so that group got all five as well. What were you all doing in this activity, yes? Competing against each other. OK, well done. You were competing against each other. Three tables, we were successful in that competition. OK, whereas there were others, Aidan? Yes, there were others who weren't as successful. So that's what competition is about. Next, Mazza gets the students to think about what they compete for. What kind of competitions are there in everyday life? Businesses. Money. Job, shelter, business, water, food, clothes and religion. The students move round tables, adding to what the previous group has written. It's an active form of self-assessment. Football, uh, <laughs> competition, 
Massa finds that the pupils remember his lessons better because of this. They actually relate a lesson, yeah, that was the lesson when we moved about in, that was the lesson where Sir used the bell in, that was the lesson where Sir used the whistle in. So the same knowledge is uh, accessed in different ways. What is it that the plants compete for and what is it that the animals compete for? I've got another small activity for you, a card sort. Maza hands out cause and effect cards for the pupils to match up. There's different words here like disease, climate change, overcrowding, predators, if there's no shelter. And these are the kind of effects that we'll have, these cards here. <laughs> Look at them carefully. If there is no shelter, plants and animals are not protected from harsh conditions. While Parkview has encouraged a more active and engaging style of teaching, the school felt that the wide range of abilities in GCSE science was not being catered for. When I came in, um, the students were basically doing only two courses. Um, they were doing the double award um, and the work-related group, which was doing applied science. And I felt, coming in, fresh pair of eyes, that that really didn't meet the needs of the students. We're now teaching the separate sciences to our very able. Um, we've got two groups doing what was traditionally known as the dual award. And then we've got one group, 10-5, which are just doing the core science. Meanwhile, the school has maintained its offer of an applied science course. The applied science course is very different to the traditional GCSEs. Um, it is very much work-related, and the students that we have doing that are on a work-related programme. I like to get my hands dirty. I like to m touch things, see things happening. It's better than actually just reading all day. You get to go and experience it yourself. Applied science is all about uh, looking at the larger scale of what experiments are used for. The other classes we read through books, we have been to the factory and looked at how the process occurs. I p keep pictures in my mind of what processes take place, which makes me write down the answer quicker and will save me time. In the run-up to exams, school doesn't end at 3.30. GCSE groups are offered revision lessons after school and even at the weekends. Impressively, pupils voluntarily turn up for these, an indication of the work ethic the school has worked hard to develop. Parkview has done this by monitoring not only academic progress, but pupils' attitudes towards school as well. Every term, I think it is, um, a student is given a score for their attitude, their commitment to, to a subject. And that actually does speak volumes. A student might be a weak student, but if they're getting a high attitudinal score, that is something extremely positive. This attitudinal data forms the basis of a remarkable pastoral system that has forged strong links with parents and families. Mabina Rahman is one of the non-teaching pastoral team. Today, she's dropped in on Ali for an update on a pupil's progress before paying the girl's mother a visit. Ah, uh, she's on two A's at the moment, but I think I think she could get two A stars. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the areas that you could talk to her family about um, are I think she's a little bit weak on chemistry. Yeah. I know she's done very well in her biology and her physics, yeah. so that would be a good area that she needs to work on. Mabina recognises the problems the community faces and the role that the school can play in helping its pupils. You don't have any local amenities really in this area. There's nothing for the kids to do. So the only thing that's, uh, you know, sustained and consistent is a school for them really. Really nice family when they've got a problem or they feel that, you know, they want to come and speak to us. They just come in. They support their children in everything they do, so they always encourage them, pushing them to their full potential. These visits aren't just for pupils in trouble. The kids will come back the next day and say, oh, you visit our house, you say, and tell my mum that I'm doing really well. But I think it's so important that all the time that we've, you know, in the past few years, um, sometimes we've emphasised too much on the negative side of things, and now we are concentrating a lot on the positive side of the kids as well. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Are you okay? Yeah. I've just come to see you today about um, Asia really. Um, she's been doing really well in school and um, I've brought some information um, particularly to do with science that she's been doing. I was talking to her teacher about and she said some fabulous things about her. So I got my glasses actually and I'll just quickly read. She says she's a very friendly member of the group who displays a considerable interest in the subject and participates in practical work with enthusiasm. They're doing 
two modulars that they've just finished. Yeah, um, she's did she tell you about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two exams that she's just done, um, and that's been to do with biology and physics. She's yeah. predicted like A's for that at the moment. <laughs> so yeah, inshallah, inshallah, <laughs> she'll do um, she'll do really well. But, um, there's two areas of improvement uh, yeah. in terms of uh, analysing data. Mm -hmm. So she needs to look at information that she's got yeah. and be able to analyse it a bit better than what she's doing at the moment. Is there any concerns you've got at the moment? Uh, I think she finds chemistry a bit. Chemistry, yeah. yeah. Uh, she's mentioned that to me before as well, that yeah. she's finding chemistry a bit difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I did ask a teacher about that before as well. Um, okay. And the teachers are, are providing her a bit more work to do. I'm really happy. The teachers in the school, they do very well for the children. And they encourage kids. And they have extra, they give the extra time to them. And that's why I think the students are bright. Parental support is a major influence on pupil achievement, but the school has had to work hard to develop this. When I came in 2001, the, I think the view of many, many parents was it's the school's responsibility and parents were not proactive in their pupils' education. I knew that because I could have a parents' evening uh, for year 11 and I would have, out of 100 plus parents, I might have four. This situation has improved and the school is now looking at other ways to increase its communication with parents. We're investigating how we can text parents and, 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 and let them know on, on a, a different basis rather than letters and invitations. The other thing that we've done is to ensure that when parents come in, we can communicate with them in the language of their choice. By improving relationships with the families, we can improve the performance of the pupils because as the families grow to trust us, we can work more directly with families in how they can support their child at home. Parkview has become one of the most improved schools in the country and its GCSE science results have benefited from policies that both discipline and encourage pupils. If I was going into another school to raise GCSE results, the four things I put in place would first of all to develop a good, strong science team okay. to look at what the range of courses are that are being offered, to look at the use of data with both by staff and by students, and finally develop the relationship between the school and parents. Despite the challenges of catering for an economically deprived, culturally distinct community, Parkview has managed to significantly improve its GCSE science grades as part of a supportive, straight-talking new approach to learning that leaves pupils in no doubt as to what is expected of them. OK, good. The kids here are facing huge levels of deprivation. They're out there on the streets at night. They are not angels. They do not behave well. It's the way in which you structure the school, you manage the school, you lead the school to get an environment in which there is no escape from learning.